If you had a dream of being a data analyst or data scientist, but didn't have the time or resources to go to a four-year degree program, in some cases a six-year or 10 years if you're getting your PhD, you're not alone. There are a lot of people out there who are trying to become data analysts or data scientists going the self-taught route. However, this can be discouraging when you take the certificate programs, you buy multiple Udemy courses, you read books, read articles, you have a GitHub page, and you get no callbacks. Nobody's interested in you. Did you just waste your time and money and effort? Hopefully not. That would be terrible. I don't know why I'm laughing and smiling. Sad. Not good. Hopefully, some of the tips that I provide today will help you understand a little bit better what you can do to stand out above the crowd when you don't have that formal education backing you. So with me, I get really focused on my own experiences, what I've done. I know what I know. I know the time and the effort that I've put in. And so I have a bias. I think, wow, I've worked hard. I deserve this. But the fact of the matter is I don't deserve anything and neither do you. You don't deserve it. You have to earn it. So let's take a step back so we can get away from our biases. Imagine with me for a second that you're a business owner. You need a data analyst or a data scientist. You have two resumes in front of you, yours and somebody with a university degree. Both resumes show promise. These individuals look like they know what they're talking about. So who are you going to choose? The person without a degree or the person with a degree? If you're like me, you're probably going to choose the person with the degree. Just because somebody has a degree doesn't mean that they're better, but it does provide evidence that they have put effort in, they've been tested, and they have somewhat of an idea of what they're doing. So the question becomes, why would an employer hire you with no degree over somebody with a degree? This sounds like a rhetorical question, but it is not. Let's think about this for a minute. Here are the reasons that I thought of. Let me know if you have any additional ideas in the comments below. If you have a, a connection to the person hiring or the company, that could help you land that job over somebody who has a degree. This is easier said than done though. People don't want to connect with someone just because they want a job. So it feels like this is just kind of luck of the draw. Some things that I've tried, I don't know if it's actually helped me out, but find some companies you're interested in, follow them on social media, interact with a few of their posts, try to set up an informational interview. This could be a good way to get to feel the company, meet a few people, Another reason why someone might hire you over a person with a degree is you are simply better than them. You have more experience, you've worked on more projects, you have domain expertise. That's one way to show that you have an edge over other people. You know the algorithms better, you know the programming languages better, you know how to communicate, you know how to visualize data. The hardest part here is because you don't have a degree, people are not gonna trust you that you are better than someone with a degree. So what you have to do is demonstrate this. Once again, this can be tricky because oftentimes you have your resume and that's it to try and convince people to look into you. So you want to make sure that you have your resume dialed in. Don't waste space. Don't waste time. Show exciting projects. You want to build intrigue so that somebody's like, oh, what is this project? I want to look at it. As I've said before, this is easier said than done. But when you're working on projects, definitely practice those tutorial projects that are in every course. I look at a lot of resumes and it's easy to tell when someone mindlessly followed along with a guided project and didn't put much or any thought into what they were actually doing. In some cases, I've even seen people do projects where they've literally copied and pasted the exact explanation and code as the guided projects. In the very least, write these out in your own words. Describe what, why, and how you're going to accomplish your goals. Even better would be to do your own project, something that'll catch the eye of a hiring manager or employer. You want to get their eyes onto your GitHub or portfolio project so you can show them all the cool things you can do. GitHub is a great place to post your projects. However, what really stands out to me are those who use GitHub pages or build their own website to display their projects. It makes me think that that person is willing to go the extra mile on the projects that they work on. So you need to develop those skills above and beyond what somebody with a degree has. You need to demonstrate that you have that. And in order to demonstrate, you need to build intrigue in those people who are looking at your resume. This is all easier said than done. However, it's not impossible. It's going to take work, yes. So don't expect to do a two month certificate program and be able to compete with somebody with a four year degree. It's unrealistic. It's not going to happen. 
you're gonna have to do more work than a certificate or a couple of Udemy courses in order to get a job. So make sure you have your resume dialed in. Ask somebody else to look at your resume, somebody who will actually give you critical feedback. This can be awkward to put yourself out there and say, hey, will you look at my resume? But it's going to help. As I said before, we tend to have our own biases. And for me, at least, it's hard to see past the work that I've put in and I know that I've put in. I'm blinded to my weaknesses, but other people can point those out to me. This can be a really difficult journey, but I know you've got it. You can do this. Keep applying, keep sharpening your skills, seek outside feedback, and you'll get there.